we are to propose to take up the concept of equality in this class on political philosophy. Today, the concept is equality, which is one of the most debated and conflicting and baffling problem in the field of political theory. Equality uh, has been debated over the last 2000 years. It started all with the ancient Greek philosophers, Plato and Aristotle, who didn't go much deeper into the problem of equality, but they defined it in a way that equality means that giving equal chances to the persons concerned or everybody concerned according to the social status they occupy in the society. That means what we in modern times mean by equality was not quite dealt with properly by these two philosophers because they had other interest to discuss. Secondly, we find that equality is taken up by the Roman Stoics whose main point was that it is uh, some sort of uh, uh, thing which humans are entitled to have because they are humans, what we call generally the natural right. So equal to be treated as equally was supposed to be a natural right. That was the basic contention of the Roman Stoic philosophers. Then we find that Christian fathers, uh, they too, when they discussed this problem of equality, they took quite naturally that all human beings are equal on the grounds that all humans are children of God. So it is basically on their basic religious conviction that they took this position and we don't get any definite definition of equality as such. When we come to the 18th century, we come to Rousseau, who took really very highly philosophical position to argue in his discourse on the origins of human inequality. It is quite famous document where Rousseau argued that all men are equal because they are morally entitled to be equally treated. But at the same time he pointed out that in the whole course of human history it has never been achieved. Equality as a problem of political philosophy or ideology was taken up by John Locke who are good also in terms of natural rights tradition and what he actually meant by equality is nothing but what we call today equality in the eye of law. We know that John Locke was basically the spiritual father of bourgeoisie ideology and therefore the position he took that all men, meaning thereby all free men, they should be equally treated by the law, nothing more than that. When we come to Marx, we find that he viewed this problem from an entirely new angle. He said that the bourgeois concept of equality is totally unacceptable to him because it is the equality of people who enjoy the property rights under the capitalist system and therefore what the bourgeois call equality is nothing but equality among the persons who have got a stake in the property system. And according to him, real equality can be achieved only after 
abolition of capitalism or destruction of capitalism. And he had his own definition. We will come to that later on. We find that these differences among the liberals about the definition of equality came into light in the 19th century and it is found that there were some sort of a expressions like equal freedoms or vis-a-vis -vis democracy, I mean bourgeois democracy that they championed. Now was it a help to democracy or was it inhibiting freedom? That is, the relation between equality and freedom or equality or liberty, the 19th century liberals were quite loud but not that very clear. If we come to modern liberals in the sense that the early 20th century, if we come to this, I would like to mention two philosophers. One is Hobhaus in his book on liberalism 1911 and another was Richard Tony, whose book on equality in 1931. Now both of them, they made the point very clear that capitalist property system is not acceptable to a certain extent because it is the capitalist property system which leads to private affluence and public squalor. That humans as private persons, individuals, they may have some equality among themselves only. But the impact of this equality was disastrous when we look into the actual reality in the society. Because I, you know that in the early three decades of the 20th century and all these philosophers were talking about their experience of their uh, West European situations, mm -hmm. that the situation was not quite good for the ordinary persons, ordinary citizens because of deteriorating economic systems, economic mm -hmm. facilities. So they try to they define it or deal it in that way. And in recent times, I mean in our time, so to say, we come across uh, a philosopher who is known as economist but is also a social philosopher, I mean Amartya Sen. Now he advocates that larger public spending for the benefit of the marginal deprived sections, the poor sections. And particularly he always emphasizes that public expenditure is a must in respect of primary education and in respect of primary health care. These are, according to Sen, is fundamental needs of a democracy as the first step towards achieving equality. And the liberals of our times, for example, John Rawls, his uh, solution was that equality is necessary, but liberty must get the priority. And for achieving equality, his solution was progressive taxation. That is, you tax the rich in order to benefit the poor. So this is the kind of thinking that we find when we come to the modern sociologists and social philosophers of a, in the second half of the 20th century, we find they are raising another quite different problem, I mean issue. They raise the issue whether equality is at all possible sociologically. I mean, their basic argument was there must be some social differentiation and social stratification in order to make social structure. So these are the sociological, anthropological concept. If you mean that no society is possible without a social structure, and the moment the concept of structure comes in, so naturally there will be some layers. 
So more equal and less equal, this is more or less an indispensable element in the discourse. And uh, in fact, they pointed out that every society in human history till today, there is some sort of a functional norm prescribing acceptable degree and the kinds of inequality in the society. It is, sir, it is somewhat like the caste system prevalent in India, like it justifies the existence of different sections, each performing its own duties. So, No, I think uh, you have got the point, but uh, not in a right uh, mm -hmm. meaning, I should say. They are not uh, defending caste system as such, because the caste system as practiced in India, it has so many dimensions, etc. No, they are not defending it. They say that any, what in political science, we have got a structural functional theory of Almond, um, Powell, etc. They said that every society has a structure of its own. And within the structure, every group has its own allotted functions. So if a society means a structure like this, an arrangement of social relations, so naturally functional specifications has to be there has to be there. There is, it is no uh, wishful thinking that we are, we should be all equal. They say that it is not sociologically experienced in history and it is also not logically correct to imagine a society where everybody is equal to one another. There is a logical contradiction in it, they say. But uh, if we come if you have any any problem, you tell me now, right no, now. Sir. Huh? No, sir. I got Structural, I got functional theory. Yeah, I got this. Sociologically, they okay. say, and anthropologically, they say, because they have studied ancient tribes hmm. and the modern societies also for the whole scanning the whole uh, sociological, anthropological data. They come to this conclusion finally that uh, imagining imagining a perfectly egalitarian society is not possible. There has to be distinctions. Yes. I mean functional. Functional, functional norms vary. Because we cannot imagine equality between, suppose, uh, equality of pay between a surgeon and the tailor, between a scholar and the shopkeeper. Is it possible that everybody should be but both equal are in that? Their relative so functionally, they are all useful in society. So I think Harold Lasky. He has some new points to add here in this debate. He said that uh, men are broadly equal under despotism and yet unfree. This is his expression. That if we say you can despotism, despotic government, so status of everybody is the same. I mean, it's equally sufferer. It, Yes. If liberty is mm -hmm. not taken mm -hmm. or not approved, then we, we suffer equally. So in that sense, we are equal. But it is correlated equality to be properly grasped, a correlated with liberty. And equality never implies identity of treatment. So this is, a, I think, very cogent point to be noted that we may uh, say so many things rhetorically or passionately. Equality, we want equality, we are all equal, we are all humans. But basically, everybody is equal in the sense that they are interest are to be taken proper care of. Not that everybody's need is identical. Identical and equal are quite different concepts. So equality must be pursued in the sense of entitlement of men to receive similar, not identical, facility. That is, some empowerment in certain situations should be normally, equally given to persons, to all human beings, 
in accordance to the role they play in the society. I think now yes, it's quite yes. clear. And this Lasky has coined a particular expression. He said that this problem of equality then as a concept is the organization of opportunities. Whether opportunities create entitlements. Entitlement is the moral claim. Then it is reflected in the opportunities provided by the society or government or legislation or whatever we may say. But therefore, it is the social challenge that opportunities are to be properly organized in such a way that entitlement is equal. Not that absolute equality is the problem, is, is a figment of imagination and it is not possible at all. Now, and in doing that, in organizing opportunities, society or government has to take into account that no one personality suffers frustration. You see, quite a high conception, isn't it? In the context of modern day life, 20th century experience, that uh, if people, for some reason or not, there can be hundreds of reasons, but if they are frustrated, so a frustrated person and the satisfied person, according to the different social and economic situations they are in, can never have equal treatment. So, uh, this is, I think, the basic uh, elements of entering into the discourse of equality. Sir, equality, you said in one place that equality means equality of e opportunity. That means equal opportunity for all. But if... Oh, no. Okay, okay, you finish it first. Uh, okay. But what if not everyone in the society can avail of these opportunities? There may be some who are specially equipped to uh, grab those opportunities than others. Yes, right so, point, very right point. So, uh, when I use the word opportunity, I didn't say opportunity, equal opportunity for all. Oh, Never. I mean, equal facility to be entitled to the opportunities. Not that the absolute thing is to be equal to all. Okay. Because you, uh, when you concluded your question, you correctly observed that according to the situation they are mm -hmm. socially and economically placed. Mm -hmm. So their needs varies, their aspirations varies, their happiness varies. Isn't it? Yes, sir. Thank you. So suppose uh, the a drunkard in the street, if you give them scholarship and books and extra <laughs> on par with the students in a very grand new scheme of equal opportunity for all, it is meaningless Absolutely, in sir. that sense, isn't it? So in that uh, way, we have to approach the problem of equality as a concept of political philosophy. But I think this is the preliminary thing that we can uh, treat today and there will be more discussions on this in the next classes. Okay, sir.